Gustafsson here again with another first listen review. Um, sorry I missed you guys last week. Uh, I had fully intended on trying to get some uh, content out there, but I was on the road. I had a show I had to do out of town quite a ways away, and a lot of driving and a lot of uh, just not being around the home. So um, unfortunately, by the time I got back around to being able to do anything, it had already been like three or four days past the releases, and uh, I'm just... Uh, I don't know, not into like releasing something quite that late or you know, you know, reviewing something that are probably already has by that point. So anyway, we're back on track again this week. Um, some cool new stuff came out. Got a chance to check out what I'm going to talk about right now, which is the new release from the Black Crows. It is their uh, super deluxe edition of the Southern Harmony and Musical Companion, uh, and this is has like the remastered version of the original album. It's got a CD of B-sides and outtakes and unreleased stuff, and then uh, they have a concert here at the end of it taken from uh, February 6th in 1993 down in Houston, Texas, and uh, I was, I thought this was coming out last week for some reason, I don't know, I got my release dates kind of screwed up, so looking for it, looking for it in everywhere, and then uh, realized I was a week off, so anyway, I've been really anticipating this one, and uh, so I Popped in, uh, the first thing I did was listen to the outtakes, the B-sides. I've heard this album so many times, it's actually one of my favorite uh, Black Crows albums. I really like the Black Crows, I've been listening to them since they first came out on the scene. And I uh, really like that southern rock style that they have. A little bit loose and jam band style at times here and there. But <clears throat> And uh, you know the fact that these guys are just still around, even though they took a look break there, you know, Fighting Brothers, one of those brothers bands where they have the internal conflict and all that stuff, and uh, they broke up for a while and got back together. In the meantime, we did get some cool solo stuff from both of those guys, too, but uh, anyway, they're uh, celebrating this album, and so checked out the uh, B-sides, because that's like the thing that always intrigues me the most about these box sets, even though I don't know if this really counts as a box set, but um, <clears throat> so the very first song on there, 99 Pounds, it seems like I'd heard that before, I'm not really sure where, but... I really thought that was a really cool song. I would have really appreciated that one on the uh, the album itself, but that was a cool song. I really dug that. And uh, as I was listening to these, I realized that you know most of these um, they recorded very well, so they could have been used as you know on the album. And you can see here, like in like they have a slower version of "Sting Me" on here, which is cool to hear. Um, however, I definitely appreciate the more up-tempo version that has just so much more energy. It's fun to hear what they you know, were experimenting with with that one. Uh, there's the version of Rainy Day Woman on here, which unfortunately I could have dealt without that one. It's just because I've, I don't know, probably 99% of the bar bands I've seen in my uh, lifetime have done that song. So it's just one of those songs I just don't need to hear again. <laughs> I just like the song, but it's uh, just one I don't need to hear again. But um, that one, Miserable, was a cool song. This is one I hear called Boomer Story, really good. Uh, you know, working out version of um, Bad Luck, Blue Eyes, Goodbye. Um, sometimes Salvation's on here, which is unfortunate. That's my least favorite song on the on the whole album. It's just one of those ones that just never reached out and grabbed me. But the rest of the album I always really liked a lot. But there's like a work to, working version on that. Um, on here, and then they end with a song called Black Moon Creeping, which was a pretty cool, boozy little number. <clears throat> then I went and checked out the original album, and uh, the remaster of this one, I I don't like at all. Um, I actually stopped listening to it partially through this just because I, I didn't want it to ruin it for me. That's, I, that's how much I dislike the remaster of this one. I don't know what they did. It's got a more bright sound to it, but the bass guitar in this, they brought out some like horrible, um, you know, just harmonics in it. it the, the sound is just so bad that it was distracting me from the songs. And I'm like, I don't want this to ruin my vision of what this album is. So I took it out and stopped playing it. So I don't know if it gets better as it goes. I doubt it. But I just didn't listen to it from that point on. It just it did not sound good to me at all. Sometimes it happens with these remasters. They... Not, they're not always a good thing. This has happened on other stuff I've listened to where the remaster just takes away. It's just, I don't know, sometimes it just sucks the life out of, you know, what it is. Uh, I don't know. It just did not work at all for me on this one. So if anybody's looking forward to that um, and they have the same opinion as I do, you're going to be very disappointed. Uh, some of you may like the new mix. I don't know. It, I, I didn't care for it at all. <clears throat> um, but then 
the live recording. This was fun. This was a very well recorded. Uh, they do, you know, a lot of the songs obviously from this album, but it's amazing how how, how good and live and tight these guys they're loose but they're tight they just they go off in these little experimental jams but they stick with each other they're like almost like they can read each other's minds they know where they're going um i've heard other live bootlegs and stuff from these guys and they don't play the same thing twice they they just they're just making stuff up who used to do that and there's a lot of other bands that are really good at that too i don't listen to a lot of jam band type stuff but <clears throat> this is one of the uh, you know almond brothers could do that type of thing too I, i've I enjoy them a lot, and they're kind of along the same lines as that when they do their experimental, uh, you know, little jams and stuff like that. And there's a lot of that on here. I mean, there's what uh, eight, ten songs here, and this album that you know, ten songs on the live disc, and it's like 73 minutes long. So you know, there's a lot of long uh, experimental stuff on here. Um, even sometimes Salvation, which I said was my least favorite one, it sounds cool on this one. They do a little bit of a different vibe with that one, and it was cool. Um, and, you know, the little stuff that uh, Chris Robinson says between songs is kind of funny. It's I, I like live albums. I just think they're fun. It just makes me feel like, you know, the energy of the show when it's a good show, and this was a good show that they did. It actually had a lot of high energy, and more than I have right now, as you can probably tell. Still fighting this gold thing, but uh, anyway... That's what I uh, thought of that one. As always, I feel um, like you guys should share your opinions on this, whether you agree with me or not. Um, you know, kindly to each other. <laughs> Sometimes uh, some of these on here, I don't know what is up with people. They get a little thorn in their in their side. You know, then <laughs> uh, <laughs> they just feel like they need to like jab at other people, and I don't get that. But try not to do that, and uh, you know like subscribe and share and just keep this kind of music out there and alive and let everybody know that this stuff is still out there and thriving and uh i don't know until next one we'll talk to you later see ya